<clears throat> Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy Green Pastures Farm. Today I'm out on uh, this is actually our lifetime lease farm, Steve and Cindy's, and um, feeling a little better. <laughs> we got uh, 3.75 inches of rain over about 36 hours, and um, just walked up here to check the cows are going to be on this paddock in about uh, 12 to 14 days and i just wanted to show you you know we're in uh well it's august 2nd i'm sorry august 3rd and uh, you can see the fescue is the grass has got most of the green in it and then you have a, a little bit of there's some uh that's eastern gamma grass a clump of it we've got a little bit of that coming up in here well here's some more you see the eastern gamma grass. Um, it just really, really does well in a drought. Eastern gamma is a uh, sign. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a signature plant for uh, you're doing things right. You start seeing it come in your pastures. This was the same plant that the buffalo grazed across the Midwest for well, however old you think the earth is, <laughs> 48 million of them. And uh, the gamma grass was one of their primary grasses, that and big blue stem. So this is a prairie native warm season type grass. And uh, it was here, it's, it's in the seed bank and uh, it's spreading. So it does have a chance to go to seed normally and then the birds, between the birds and the cattle eating it and spreading the seed, we're starting to see a few more plants around. And uh, that's exciting. But I was gonna show you, you can see how brown, this is uh, all orchard grass. Orchard grass and clover. And of course there's a little buckhorn. It's just, you know, your whole pasture was orchard grass and clover. You're not gonna have much feed out here. If you go right next to it, the Kentucky 31 fescue, it held up pretty good. Um, and then you come over here where you got more cover. And the, the red clover actually looks pretty good. The clover I just showed you a minute ago, that was white clover. But anywhere there's a pretty good stand of orchard grass, it did not take that drought very well. We were in a terrible drought. Uh, just not getting any moisture at all and uh, we finally got bailed out thank you all for all the <laughs> I know I got a lot of private emails too saying just wanted to, wanted to let you know that we were uh, praying you got some rain up there at Green Pastures Farm so I appreciate that every little bit helps and sure don't want to turn down anybody that saying a prayer for a rain on Green Pastures Farm, especially in August. Folks, we are at the stockpile starting right here. You know, we got from August 1st until October 15th. And you'll grow a little bit of grass after October 15th here in the Midwest, but not a lot. It's just gotten, it's starting to get too cold and the grass is shut down. So we got to be extremely careful when we come through here not to take this down very short. Otherwise, it's going to impact our winter stockpile. So, yeah. Look at that alfalfa. <laughs> alfalfa, it really shines in a drought. Um, I saw that in Alberta. You know, they're really dry when we were up there in Canada, in that particular part of Alberta. It was really, really dry. And then they started getting rain, rain around Edmonton. By the time we got there and when we left, they had plenty of rain, but a lot of Alberta was still bone dry. And the ones that had alfalfa in their pastures still had some forage. That thing right there, it has a really deep taproot, unlike clover. Uh, unlike Lespedeza, it doesn't send down a taproot. You know, that alfalfa, it's going to go down there four or five feet deep. So it's, it's punching through the hard pan. 
but I tell you what, it's just amazing what uh, good heavy rain like that will do for you. It just picks you up, you know. <laughs> I mean, the ground's wet. Pull back this. I haven't seen wet, wet, wet for so long. It's wet. Won't be long. If we get another rain, we'll have earthworms. They'll be coming back up and eating all this stuff. All that dead stuff. So where did that three and three quarter inches go? It landed on this field. Did it end up down there in the creek? Well, I'm sure some of it ran off because it came so hard. Most of that three inches came in about two hours. But, uh... I'm gonna guess 95% of it stayed on this field. And if we'd tilled this and put this into soybeans or corn or whatever, uh, our soil and the water would be down in that creek. So we're not gonna allow that to happen. We, we love our soil too much to let that happen. Yeah, I don't know, it just, uh, it's less than 24 hours since the last, well, we had got a quarter inch last night. But if we stay, you know, if we stay in the 80s, get down the 70s at night, uh, this grass is going to crank. It's going to take off. And if we just keep the temperatures out of the hundreds. But, you know, in August, folks, we can get it. I mean, we, I can remember 1st of September. Uh, every year around Labor Day, I mean, that's pretty hot weather. So, we, you know, we're, we're still going to see some warm weather and, we're just very thankful for the rain that we got and it's sure gonna help us get through this rough patch that we went through and it's just a, it's a good thing when you, you get moisture, period. So with that, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sign out here. I wanted everybody to keep in mind our grazing school is coming up in September and that's the first week of September. You can sign up on greenpasturesfarm.net that's our website, and uh, we have a sign-up sheet there. Tells a little bit more about the grazing school. It's a great opportunity for some people to come and see what we're doing, how we've mitigated through this drought, and you're going to see some really healthy, fat cattle and uh, sheep and so, and so forth. So anyway, hope to see some of you all there in September, and uh, we're going to see you all down the road. Everybody be safe out there. And uh, those of you that are new to the channel, if you'd hit that subscribe button on the way out, that'd be awesome too. So have a good one. See you next time.